YouTube. Welcome back for our second TTC Tuesday. Just a few quick things today, nothing big. Maybe in the next week or so we have some big things coming up that are, I'm very excited about. But for today, I just want to walk you through a few of the things that I'm using that I think are probably the easiest and quickest ways of improving my chances of getting pregnant early on in this TTC process. They don't require a lot of technology, they don't require a lot of money to get into, but all together, they might actually help me to get pregnant before I have to turn to more invasive means of, of help. So let's get to that. The first thing that I've been doing is taking my basal body temperature. Now I know that I talked about that last week, um, but let's talk about that a little with a little bit more in depth. Your basal body temperature is the temperature your body is at when it's at the nadir of its activity. So when you are just waking up in the morning and your systems are not quite all in line yet, that is when you need to be taking the temperature. I have a terrible time remembering to take this, but thankfully Ken has been very helpful and will wake me up in the morning to take it and then make sure he texts me the number that it says or else I won't remember. This is the thermometer that we are using. It's a very simple thermometer. It differs from other t uh, other thermometers that you might have um, for when you're sick or something, Be, uh, in that it actually um, calculates or it actually registers temperatures uh, on a smaller level. So, and that's really important for when you're tracking your basal body temperature. Those little minuscule changes in your your temperature, the body your body's temperature could could mean something significant when it's all tracked together. So that is your that's the BBT thermometer. So I got mine off of Amazon for like twelve dollars. They're not super expensive. The second thing that I am doing is I am drinking raspberry leaf tea. Uh, I drink it for the first two weeks of my cycle. It's probably fine to drink it for your whole cycle but it is not recommended for women who are pregnant because it it might induce contractions so I only take it during the first I only drink it during the first two weeks of my cycle it is supposed to be helping um, circulation and it's supposed to help uterine health uh, it builds muscles in your uterus it uh, increases the blood flow to your uterus so those first two weeks of your cycle when you're building up you, the, uter the uterine lining, increased blood flow to your uterus will build up your uterine lining, which is where hopefully after you've ovulated, you will have implantation. So it's really important to build up that uterine lining. And this tea is supposed to increase the, your, the blood flow to your uterus. And it's supposed to improve um, your uterine health, which I don't know that I've ever used the word uterine so much in one t at one time before. Hmm, interesting. So, uh, I'm not a doc, well, I am a doctor, but I'm not a medical doctor. So I'm not advocating that anybody uses this without talking to their doctor first. I am using it because I believe that it's going to help me increase the blood flow to my uterus. And, and it's just really an experiment at this point. But because it has been shown to induce contractions before, I am not doing it when I might be pregnant. The Next thing that we have are OPKs uh, or ovulation predictor kits. I have two. One because I was naive and I thought I would only need one kit to figure out when I was ovulating. But when you have a cycle that's a little bit longer than normal, I, I typically run between 29 and 32 days. I say typically but I never waver from between 29 and 32 days. I never have. Um, I have had two cycles that were any later than two, than 32 days, and one was because I was sick, and the other one was because I was incredibly stressed out. I guess because I am so plus size, there was that fear in my mind that maybe I wasn't ovulating, because so many people have, so many studies and so many doctors and so many people online have, have, encouraged us to believe that if you are plus size something is wrong with your body and that you will never be able to conceive naturally without 
losing a ton of weight and without a lot of doctor's involvement and a lot of, of invasive techniques. So I had that fear in my brain that I wasn't ovulating. So I had this, this kit, the Clear Blue Easy Ovulation Kit, has seven tests, one pregnancy test. I had this for a couple of months and every time it came time to me, for me to test, I got nervous. And I kept thinking, what if I don't ovulate? What if I don't ovulate and us not getting pregnant is my fault? And I never had any reason to believe any different. I don't have any of the typical signs of PCOS other than being overweight. Um, and I don't have an abnormal period at all. I occasionally um, will spot when I ovulate now that I know that I ovulate for sure. Uh, and I will occasionally um, spot right the day before my period starts in earnest. So I had that, that fear that maybe something is really wrong with me and maybe something, um, maybe I'm never going to get pregnant. Now it's still possible that, I, that something is, else is going on, but this is only the first month that we're trying. I'm not going to make mountains out of molehills when it's not necessary. I'm not going to make something uh, an issue or become dramatic about something until I have more information, until we've taken a few months to try this on our own to see if something, if to see if it can be done without anything else. Um, then, so I bought this kit and I had it for a few months before I tried it. And then I just realized that seven t tests, I was never going to be feel, feel comfortable with just seven tests because I was always going to feel like, well, what if I start and I test too early or what if I miss it because I don't have enough tests or what if I start too late because I'm worried about starting too early so I miss it be from the other direction. So Ken got me this box. It's the Easy at Home um, Ovulation Predictor Kit. It has 50 OPKs and 20 HCG testers, which the HCG tests are, are the pregnancy tests. And then if you watch any um, OPK tests done on, on YouTube, then you have seen something like these before. Um, but they're what people call the cheapies. And to be honest, they are pretty cheap. It was $20 for this box of 50 OPKs and 20 pregnancy tests. And when you're at the grocery store or you're at the, the when you're at CVS or you're at Walmart or whatever where you're buying your pregnancy tests your H and your OPK is twenty dollars for that many that's pretty cheap and suddenly the idea of testing more often to see if you are ovulating or have ovulated doesn't seem so overwhelming and doesn't seem like it's going to be such a financial burden on you so Ken picked those up for me from Amazon for $20 so that I felt a little bit more comfortable using OPKs. But because I still had these, this month I used both just to compare them. Because a lot of people, if you're on any uh, TTC message boards or if you've read any reviews online, a lot of people have um, a fear of using blue dye tests. And the Clear Blue Easy tests are blue dye. The big criticism that I have heard is that they often will give you um, evaporation lines, so something after it's dried will maybe seem like it's a pod positive or more positive than when you're testing within the window of time that it recommends. So most of these tests will say you will see results after three minutes, disregard the test after five or ten minutes. Um, and so it seems to me that the big criticism of the blue dye tests, which is that you will see evaporation lines, um, shouldn't be too big of an issue if you are only looking at the tests within the time frame that it recommends. Um, I will get into why I do not like the clear blue, blue easy tests in a minute, um, but I will say that the uh, easy at home tests were red dye tests, so I liked the fact that I had both a blue dye and a red dye this month just to kind of compare them. Let me show you the progression of the tests that I, ha I took this month so I can show you. Now, please be aware that these are about a week old, so they will have evaporated, all, all of them will have evaporated, but you can kind of tell, because they've all evaporated, the progression anyway, um, because they will have evaporated in different um, 
dark that darkness levels are you know the the tests will still show a progression because of of how they've evaporated equally hopefully here are the easy at home ovulation predictor kits and the clear blue opks you can clearly see that on days 13 14 there was nothing absolutely nothing on day 15 there is a slight shadow of a line slight hint of a line uh, same on day 16 and then day 17 hit and day 18 and there was no real question the reason that I did not like the clear blue easy was that on both days 17 and 18 the t the control line that showed up right away and then the test line it showed up right around minute three which is when it was supposed to show up but uh, it was so patchy and while it looks like on day 18 it's so definitive now when it sh when I when it showed up on day 18, it was so patchy and so um, unclear that I still wasn't sure that it was a positive. The only reason I knew it was a positive was because when I went when I uh, was because I looked at the easy at homes and this one is clear. You can tell day 13 is a slight line. Day 14, it's much much. Um, it seems like a much more sensitive test. Um, so there's day 15, 16, 17, and 18. I probably should have continued to test just to see if there were any other, if if it predicted that day 19 and 20 were fertile as well, which could, which could point to a potential um, issue, but I think once I got to days 17 and 18, that line on, eight, on day, the line on day 17 showed up relatively quickly, but day 18 it showed up faster and darker than the control line, so I knew for sure that it was a positive. Um, so I will. I'm a. I'm a big fan of these. So that's the OPKs, and then the final thing that I am going to start on June first. I have not started it yet, um, but uh, the thing that I'm starting on June first is um, fertility tracker for bullet journaling. I don't know if any of you have seen bullet journaling, whether or not you're on Pinterest or whether you've seen it on, on YouTube, but it's this huge craze, um, that it's supposed to keep you a little bit more organized. Um, and I have found it terrible. I'm, I'm terrible at actually doing bullet journaling. I have tried it and I've tried it again, and I've tried it a third time. I am probably going to try it a fourth time because I have all of the materials. But one of the things that I have found really cool is your goals tracker. And so I decided to modify one of my goals trackers to be my fertility goals tracker. So starting on June 1st, I have the fertility goals tracker for the month of June, and that's going to help me track the things that I would like to do or not do on every given day. And I will show that to you now. And here's the fertility goals tracker for the month of June for me. I just wrote the month up at the top, the year. This is a dot grid notebook that I got off of Amazon. It's fairly inexpensive. You can use any notebook you had. I just um, because I was getting into bullet journaling, I wanted to get some of the the, the, the dot grid notebooks because they t they tend to be easier for for bullet journaling, and I just had some stickers, so I I added those, um, and then here are the things that I have determined to try and do. You can see that I've already started because I am filming this on June first. My goals for the month of June when it comes to fertility are to drink water. To remember to take my basal body temperature, to not eat sweets, to take a walk every day, or most days, to take vitamins, to not have any caffeine, I might have some green tea in the morning that has some trace amounts of caffeine, but not a lot, to get six or more hours of sleep and ovulation tests. So I've just marked out, I don't know when my period will start, so I don't know when I might, I need to start testing, but I'll just have black X's until those that those days that I need to take ovulation tests and then I can mark them out with the pink the way I've done the others but but that is what I have done for that and I will let you know in a, a few weeks whether this is working for me if I've had to add anything I don't have anything on here like 
don't smoke and don't drink because I don't smoke and I don't drink, so it doesn't make any sense, but you could add those if you need to. All right, well, that's all I have for this week. Next week, we will have another book review, and I think we might have something else either next week or the, in two weeks that I'm really excited to share with you. So, check back in a week for another TTC Tuesday, and check back throughout the week um, for other videos about what's going on in our lives. And if you'd like to support the channel, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I would love to talk to you, and we will see you here on the channel again soon. Thanks. Bye.